right, so for example five, we've got another numerical example. Right, I've got no function to plug into, I've got no graph, it's just some numbers. So given that h inverse of 6 is equal to 2, what are the corresponding input and output values of the original function h? So let's unpack this. All right, h inverse of 6 is equal to 2. All right, so like I explained in example 4, if you have the inverse symbol here, this number actually represents a y value. Right? And the output on the inverse function is the x value. So it's backwards from what we've been used to. So that means when my x value is 2, my y value is 6. Or working backwards, I can say, well, if I had a y value of 6, what was the corresponding x value? 2. Now, how do I rewrite that with my original function? So I want to do h of something equals something. Well, I've said this before. When you're talking about functions and their inverses, domains and ranges, x and y's, input and output, they flip-flop. So if h inverse of 6 is equal to 2, that must mean that when I plug 2 into my original function, I get 6 back out. Because 2 and 6 are connected. They're definitely an ordered pair. And you can see them in one of two ways. You can see when you plug 2 into the original function, you get 6 back out. Or when you plug 6 into the inverse, you get 2 back out. All right, so this repeating theme of x's and y's switching, right, domains and ranges flip-flopping, that's how we can relate, or one of the ways to relate the original function to its inverse. And again, this is still an x value, and this is still a y value. They're just written in a different order because this is original function, inverse function. All right, so with that, we're going to try and do a graphical approach to inverse functions. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.